morning there. You're watching QTV this morning, and I am Jenna Basonko, joined by my co-host here, my amazing co-host for that matter, um, Ibrahim Abalde. Thank you so much for joining us. Mante, yes. the different colors. It's mambo baby. Where the magis a reflection of that color fini. Te wa hante winko man li hana hold igisi. But how many the hold igisi? So it's beautiful. I mean, it's Thank you. it's red. Mm -hmm. You know, your red and soul, man, so about small colors. Yo, young men, this red is reddish brown. Wow, it's not red that brown, yeah, it's not that red, but it's reddish red brown. Red is brown, Mr. Mood. Good morning, must not dig a reddish brown. They're gonna cut it. How I am digging and do reddish brown, reddish brown. Wow, dear, dear, and I'm the full of the full of insignia. Um, time me junior school, as you high five, in the lagoon. A symbol I, they, or they, a they. badge with, which identifies an individual as a holder of an important position in they, the society. They, they. Insignia might be a stick horn or a flute. Boy, the color of an insignia might be red or reddish brown. Jangan <laughs> 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 Well, just, Mr. Boy, I'm there. I'm going to you in a deeply so face spirit client. You know, ah. I'm going to me Adama. There are things that you have. You have the cerebrum and the cerebrum. Land. You have the medulla oblongata. The Understand? <laughs> so all these things, you know, you need to put them together. Well, let's continue. Mota nak nyu wara seta fin education system be Mr. Boy. I'm going to let's continue. Isn't the yiki di wahni? Yi 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 di wahni Mr. Boy. Nyun sun nyu we into our real life. Zin kodi use. Then you don't live below a ganar, a you can hum. You have in real sense, you know, swing together, swing individual professions. We don't make good use of these things. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, for now, ne. Mhm. You never sing experience. You have to do teach, bring a think. Okay. So, so you have your own personal stuff, sir. Mhm. Perhaps I'm not low for jail. Now, you know, you can get aware of. Tega. I mean, so much stuff they seep in through you, through what they call osmosis. They call it the osmosis. Wow. So that's the nature of experience. Okay. Essentially, it's to learn to think. Mm. It's to learn to think. Yes, yeah, to learn to learn skills we wouldn't could use in life. Could use? Um, no, 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 no. Most of maths is important. So um, as usual, we have the African proverb, um, the newspaper review. Our guest is already here, Momo Dumboj. It's been a while. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, I'm glad to be here. You're absolutely correct. Um, it's been a while. Yeah. I haven't been around. Yeah. Yes. Looking forward to a great conversation. Direct, and on um, Community and Watch today, um, we'll be joined by Malang Fati. So we'll take a look at how um, a group of young people are embarking on an um, exercise to help prevent um, road accidents. Yes, it's you like know? a 20 days exercise. A 20 days exercise. Yes. Individual, not the police or anything. These are just concerned young people in absolutely, the Gambia yeah. who are like, you know, doing exercises um, around town to just make sure that um, accidents are prevented. So when they come here, they would now tell us how they're able to do this, you know, their collaboration with the police and all of that. So on social issues, we'll be joined by NDMA and we're joined by Uncle Seri Modu, um, who tell us, because the president went round, as well as um, the vice president with other cabinet ministers and council officials to actually assess um, the, the, the heavy downpour from um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just to assess. Um, we At this point in time, obviously, we all know how, how bad this particular um, disaster is, but he will further come here to educate us, maybe give us the facts and figures as to the um, amount of individuals, um, amount of hi households that we can point out to say these are the amount of households or individuals who are actually affected. But like I said, it's always important that when we have donations for relief in, in times like these, we channel it through the NDMA for proper coordination, which is which is important. So Ibrahim, what is our African proverb? Yes, the African proverb reads, he who knows much does not speak much. He who knows much does not speak much. Manam ko hamlo bari do hamlo bari. Wow. Okay. Manam, manam, manam. Actions speaks louder than voice, according to. He who uh, knows yeah. much does not speak much. Yes. Why lolo nakdafa? How? He who knows much. 
does not speak much. So, man, lo ma fok ne, mon la wah ne lai kuham du belelele. Kuham, an empty barrel makes a whole lot of noise. Lo lo yaga na inkuham. Why, why do in all instances na? Mr. Bojo, ham ga yo kadu bi, Mr. Bojo, hara nyu baye la kadu gi. Bepere nyu nyu soga nyu jel kadu gi, da dal si kuham, jika. Yes, he who knows much does not speak much. Mm -hmm. quite, quite interesting. The book you sent me back to, to another one. Um, but the more you know, the more you know that you know nothing. I think it is that recognition that shuts them up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So, yes, it's one of those paradoxes, mm -hmm. is, is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but to some extent, it's right. Empty barrels make the most noise. Um, True knowledge is really humble. I think that's what's really the, uh, the point is. Mm -hmm. true, true knowledge is really humble. I think that's basically it. So be careful before you open your mouth, in, in other words, mm -hmm. really. Um, listen twice as much as you talk, for instance. Some, mm -hmm. some, some people suggest that because mm -hmm. God gave us two ears and one mouth. So let's use them in, 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 in proportion. So I think that's the sort of well, thing it Mr. Boch, um, mm -hmm. Because you know what? Sometimes people have debates where it's not actually based on facts. Things happen. People just make the noise, you know, have arguments, you know, where it's not based on facts. It's just based on sky talk. So generally, mm -hmm. I, I don't like to get into discussions as such because it does not lead anywhere. So like you mentioned, before you speak, get the facts right, you know, have the idea, be able to defend it or repeat it anywhere because it's something solid to be able to like say it. But also And he always know that you could be wrong. And somebody can't can be the there to best, correct the you. Best preparation. Yes. You've done all your work mm -hmm. yet you could be wrong. You could be. So it's always also good to like accept other people's opinions side by side. But in the Gambia here, it's a problem. You want somebody to give their opinion of something. You want to give your opinion of something. You want someone to listen and accept it. But on the other hand, you believe that that person is supposed to have the same opinion that you have. Now, let's, let's make some distinctions here. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between an opinion or a fact and that sort of thing? And just because you give your opinion mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I have to accept it. True. So, so be careful as in here. Not, I'm not saying when mm. I give you my opinion, as in ha my perspective, you have to take it in. But as in, just accept that it is okay for people to have divergent views. Absolutely, but also remember that when you give me a rival view, I have every right to ask you difficult questions. True. Yeah. True. There's lots of people when you ask them difficult questions, then they, they start, start being, being defensive. Being yeah. defensive, but oh, it's my opinion. I said yes, but what does that mean, though? Yeah. Because we have different shades. True. Informed opinions. True. You know, some of these opinions are just things that we just opinions. pluck. Exactly, I just pluck sky from the words. air and just move on. Yeah. So you have a right to your opinion, but you don't have a right to anybody else accepting it or not. Well, that is also my right. Well, I can reject acceptance it. Acceptance, you take it mm -hmm. and change your perception That's to it. mine, but as in allow the Absolutely. individual Absolutely. to just voice out that informed opinion Absolutely. that we are talking about. Absolutely. You know, and it, uh, it's important that you talk about informed opinion because wahingalawini, come sky talk, your hamne, come beso lock of fentamid, it's a waste of time and you will not take the gambit anywhere. Not all opinions are of equal weight. True. Less people know that. True. Some opinions are weightier than others. True. So we must realize that in our public discourse, mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. otherwise we're going to have chaos. Mm -hmm. There must be what they used to call that hierarchy of decorum, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. then, uh, you know, judging from currently our social media dynamics, it does not seem that people accept people in Gambia here at this point that do not ex accept other people's opinions. The moment it's not in line with what Ibrahim Abalde thinks, then you see how yes. hate speech, yeah, I think and everything in, comes in. the in. Gambia, people accept what is good for them. Like what they, what feel they feel is feel the like, right perspective. I mean, this is the right thing for me. Yeah. Or this, this is the thing that satisfies exactly. me. You understand? So it's like what you said. I mean, always when there is an opinion, you need to ask. But for certain people, they don't ask. I mean, um, the weak one will try to defend themselves, you know. So I think it's important for us to ask questions. You want to do this. This is your opinion. This is how you want it to happen. 
how is this thing going to happen? How yeah. are you, if this thing happened, mm -hmm. what is going to be the future implications? What is going to be the success? Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to, to this thing? So it's important for us to ask, you know, everybody's entitled to your opinion, you know, but also opinion, I mean, with substance. Why Gambia Fina, Glolo, Amufi, Bepere, Hamga, there are certain discussions. Just the last time I was having a conversation with an individual, Manekone, there are certain um, discussions that has to do with maybe global dynamics or academic conversations where the moment you put in religion, <laughs> conversation, but if I stop, like it will not move, it won't go anywhere. So there are just certain conversations that has to do with dynamics, governance, academic. The moment you want to bring it in, sometimes everybody will get to shut up. So sometimes, you know, it's just being open-minded and having the right conversations. And when we're open-minded, then we ask the difficult questions to each other, and then we all come to a conclusion, and we forge ahead. Yes, I think you've touched a very important word, open-mindedness. Yes. So that means um, when I get the evidence, when somebody shows me, presents the evidence to oh, me, the then I should change my mind. True. That, that is really very important. We shouldn't be like too radical with our too, too dogmatic, yeah. too rigid. Yeah. You see, conviction, there's a border, there's a difference between conviction mm -hmm. and rigidity. Oh, yes. So you don't want to be rigid. Mm -hmm. That closes off the public space. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy for the public mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So. I think here all we want is just um, humility mm -hmm. and to know our limitations, mm -hmm. the fallibilities. Mm -hmm. There was one, 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 one philosopher, somebody asked him, um, would you die for a cause? Mm -hmm. He said, certainly not. Mm -hmm. What if I was wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Extraordinary. So that's the attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you here? Have you, I, have you had your breakfast? <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. I haven't had my breakfast yet, but you know, it's, it's manageable. Yeah, so I think that is it for our African proverb. Very interesting one. You know, mm. let's learn to, you know, accommodate other people's opinion. Don't accept, and we're not saying to change your perspective, but accept, you know, let's have the right conversations and all that. Actually, yeah, change so, it sometimes. Yeah, change it. Sometimes. If the evidence is there, don't the be point. too radical. Don't be rigid. <laughs> Unnecessary. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so let's take a look at Momo Dukajaga's story. There's cause for celebration. You know, mm -hmm. just as Mr. Ade put it yesterday on the news, what? Gambia, since 1970, is winning its first silver medal. It's just not silver, its first medal in general. You know, Judo Kafenjai was able to, you know, do that for the Gambia and, you know, it's it's big, you know, it's it's big. Absolutely. It's big. I mean this is the Commonwealth. Yeah, it's the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Can you imagine how many hundreds Since of countries? Ab absolutely. Shekhwa, you can see um the brother also of um um former minister of yeah. defence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who was also a very good sprinter himself. Yeah. I, I think he was brilliant in hundred meters. Yeah. So absolutely after all these years we've got our second medal. Yep. It happens to be a silver medal. And it's so good. gradually we're heading towards the gold. We That's the trajectory, definitely. isn't it? First bronze, Sheikh Fai won bronze. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the silver the gold is and just around the corner. Um, in this particular story, you will see a new um, athletic, which is Wuri um, Jado as well. Mm -hmm. It's good to see a new face. We're talking about Gina Bass, but, you know, we want Gina Bass to have good successes as well. It was not like the best start for her, obviously, but at least it's the beginning. And from there, gradually, I'm sure she'll be able to pick up with the required support. So let's give her all the support she needs. Everybody, we want as much talent as possible sure. and we want healthy competition right. within right. see you gotta have the health competition within mm -hmm. then you stand a chance of winning anything outside mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is how it is so anybody who comes in will get our support yep. obviously All right. so let's take a look at the story and when we come back we'll be joined by Momo Dugajaga in Birmingham you know the, you know what that means you know exactly what that means the Gambia last won a medal in the Commonwealth Games 52 years ago in 1970 at the Edinburgh Games with Sekhti Jan Fai winning bronze in the men's high jump. History was made as Fai Njai won silver in the men's 73 kilogram category. He won his semi-final fight against Dito Makastov of Cyprus. In athletics, it was not a good debut for Wuri Jado in the women's 100 meters heats. She missed out on the semi-final place, finishing fourth in a time of 11.50. However, she remains positive despite her performance. 
first of all, just putting on the uniform was great. Being on the track with those amazing, talented women was also great. So it was one of the first of many races to come. I'm just glad that I went out there, no injuries, went out and performed and did my best. You finished fourth in the race. 11.50. Uh, what do you make of your time? Um, definitely a time I didn't want to run. I uh, wanted to run faster, but you know, this is what I can produce today in this condition. So I'll just take it as it is. Uh, next time we'll work on it and hopefully a faster time. Was there any sort of intimidation um, facing Ellen Thompson, the world champion, Olympic champion? Oh, no, I'm used to it. I already ran against her in Jamaica, so this was just trying to stay with her as much as possible because I know she was going to come out the block very explosive and she's a strong runner, so it was just trying to stay as near to her as possible. The Gambia Beach Volleyball team will complete Tuesday's action for the West Africans as they take on Sri Lanka in Pool A in what will be their second game. Reporting for QTV News. I'm so, and another update is the fact that um, the um, volleyball, um, the beach volleyball, also um, the uh, the Gambian team won their second match against Sri Lanka 2-1. You know, I think we are going for gold. And they are strong contenders for a medal. Yeah, mm. really, they are. They've been, they they've are. been tops. They've been prominent True. in in their field. Yeah. So, sort of, I'm, I'm being hopeful that yeah. I have to say. So, Momo Gajak is on the line, Momudu Gajaga in Birmingham. Momudu Gajaga, give me the, give me, give me the vibes, please. Can, I can't hear you. Yes, Geneva. Yes, in, give me the vibes. In Birmingham, covering the Commonwealth Games. Yes, Birmingham. Space Birmingham. <laughs> space Birmingham. Space. <laughs> Gajaga, I love it when you say it. So tell me, how has the experience been? Hello, Jennifer. So, yeah, so how has the experience been so far? Hello, Jennifer, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Well, if you're hearing me, um, it's all happening here in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. The Gambia, like being described there in the story, world medal for the first time in 52 years. That mm -hmm. is silver medal for Pine mm -hmm. in the judo mm -hmm. um, yesterday um, against Dan Powell. Mm -hmm of England, but um, eventually it was a tough fight, mm -hmm. a very close one, mm -hmm. but uh, at the end of the day, he settled for silver, which is huge, and it's, it's something that's really a uh, big history for, for Gambia after 52 years since they last won a medal in the Commonwealth Games, Safety Jan mm -hmm. um, in 1970 mm -hmm. in the Edinburgh Games. Mm -hmm. And for the beach volleyball team also, they're yeah. doing fantastically well. Their first game again, was against St. Keith's Nevis by um, two straight steps and their second game yesterday against Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. they won two one. So it's been fantastic performance for at least those two sports, um, judo and beach volleyball. For athletics, like I described there, Wuri Jado, no, I'm not the start that she wanted for Gambia. It mm -hmm. was her debut for mm -hmm. the Gambia in the Athletics women's 100 meters hits, mm -hmm. with the likes of Ellen Thompson, mm -hmm. who's a world champion, Olympic champion, mm -hmm. and she finished fourth um, in a time of 11.05. rather. Yeah. So good news also. Mm -hmm. Bass and Co were in town yesterday. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she missed out on the 100 meters, um, but I think she should be able to compete in the 200 meters. Yeah, so did you get to engage her about how she feels about this, how those seven athletes feel about this whole situation, being stuck in France due to visa-related matters? Well, I've been in touch with them, uh, at least on social media, Gina especially. Um, they've been very much upset and disappointed about the whole thing that mm -hmm. happened. Um, but at the end of the day, um, they, they finally made it here, and they, they, they took that in good faith, that mm -hmm. um, the, the, this is how things shape up. It's rather unfortunate um, that it happened that way. So where's the problem? Where's this coming from, this whole issue of, you know, v having visa problems? But the whole visa issue um, starts, obviously, the Gambia, Gambia National Olympic Committee mm -hmm. are the ones who would um, register at least. They are the ones who would process um, mm -hmm. their visa application at their point, that is to, to send all the information of the athletes to the British High Commissioner and the UK Immigration and the UK Border Agency, that mm -hmm. is at least their 
participating for the Gambia, and they will forward that information to the Commonwealth Games Federation, which they, they did, according to them, and, you know, they're waiting for clearance and, and all of those details to get these athletes their visas. Mm -hmm. But all of these athletes were based in France. You remember Tina Bass just a few weeks ago was in the United States of America, in Oregon, competing in the World Championships, and then she returned to France again. So for them, their visas were going to be processed in France, and they get to Birmingham to, to come and compete. So the process took long. It's disappointing. Mm -hmm. I saw, you know, I, I, I and preview to certain emails from the um, Commonwealth Communications Department mm -hmm. that says that, you know, they are obviously very much disappointed and they think this is something that could have been avoided, but unfortunately their hands are tied. This is like, um, it is beyond them as well. So when it comes to the visa issues, it's the top echelon there that decides um, who gets a visa, at what time, how long the process should take. And can you imagine at the end of the day, they made their way here mm -hmm. without a visa. It, it's entry clearance that they were giving. Mm -hmm. so, so the whole process took long. Yes, mm -hmm. the Gambia government, um, let's say through the Minister of Youth and Sports, mm -hmm. Bakari Baji, mm -hmm. gave an interview to the BBC. Yes, mm -hmm. he said he's absolutely disappointed that being a member of the Commonwealth, they have six athletes who have been in France stranded there for visa-related issues. Mm -hmm. He thinks this is something that the UK government should have, um, you know, speed up the process and make it a uh, fast track so that the athletes could be here in time to, to compete because yeah. they already know they're in the system they're registered mm -hmm. and obviously they're here for the competition so yeah. the, their visa restrictions should have been eased at least for all the athletes yeah so Mamadou there's also criticism when it comes to the team you know mm -hmm. as to the number of athletes you know the number of order or individuals doing order sports that you know it's more of officials looking at the pictures that are being shared than participants is that so because that is a huge concern as we that, speak that is not true that is not true there are um, 16 okay. gambian athletes who are registered for this competition okay okay so the, the pictures that you have seen mm -hmm. um, some of those pictures were taken on the very day that we arrived mm -hmm. when some of the athletes were not around okay and some of those people that are considered as officials are coaches Okay. There is a coach for swimming, mm. there's a coach for judo, there's a coach for beach volleyball, mm -hmm. and there is coach for athletics. Okay, that's very good. It's good that you, yeah. you know, these allegations are all over the place. It is good that at least you are here to clear the air. So let's, you know, take this to a personal one. How are you feeling being in the UK for the first time? How's the feeling? Yes, it feels great, fantastic. Um, UK used to be a long far dream for me, um, basically. Uh, I, I just used to look at it as, oh, okay, maybe 10 years to come, maybe 15 years to come. Oh. Yeah, so um, finally I'm here. And I'm feeling good about it. And I enjoy every bit of it um, every day, meeting new people, mm -hmm. new experience. Uh, but I have to share my story that I've been getting lost more than 10 times every time. <gasps> oh. So I always find my way out. <laughs> yeah, I get lost. Okay. <laughs> And then I talked to the police. I said, you know, am I in the wrong place? I'm asking <laughs> um, Chamberlain Tower in Birmingham University. Oh, okay. You need to go all the way there and, you know, turn on the left and then, you know, turn right again. <laughs> Been fun. So, so how are you dealing with the weather? How is the weather there currently? The first five days I arrived here, for them, yeah, it's summer, it's hot, it's been like freezing for me really because when i left gambia you know it's about 35 degrees or at least at most 32 sometimes 31 degrees mm -hmm. so, so that was extremely mm -hmm. really hot even when i was getting to the airport i was sweating you know me yeah. you know how you know hot weather what hot weather does to me mm -hmm. so i came over this place uh, for them they said oh no it's summertime if you had come here in the winter i said maybe at that time i would be crying <laughs> uh, but i uh, really struggled for the first five days thank you so much for joining us please enjoy your stay you know
and we are so proud of Thank you. You, much, you know, and we saw, we see, we see all the reports that you are sending. Keep it up. Looking forward to you know more coming from you, inshallah. All right. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. All right, that's Momo to get the game. We were Malo, Nibir UK, Mr. Boy. Get the one night of Lul. Malo, the farm, so you were Malo. Malo, the farm, so I got a world Malo. Never Malo, the Halebid, never Malo, we were in the league. So let's, you know, just yes. um, take a look at the newspapers quickly before yeah. we, we go. Exactly, yeah. yes. Let's, let's take a look at the voice. And some of the headlines of the voice newspaper reads Gambian leader asked to explain how Bandul project was implemented. And of course, we have rainstorm destroys Kunta Kinte Island uh, Islands jetty, and we also have NEA to to punish sniper pesticide sellers, mm -hmm. and UTG development students to rural Gambia. Mm -hmm. SK market women call for government support to end suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know. Yep, so for here we have that the National Human Rights Commission is monitoring implementation or to monitor, not yet, to monitor implementation of TRRC recommendations and teachers react to 30% pay rise and that um, the National Assembly ratifies over 1 billion in loan agreements and also flood victims um, hold physical planning department accountable for their predicaments and recent heavy downpours destroys food items of many households in the greater banjo area i think that is all we have here the yes that's the point now oh, the, the point. Um, we have ministry of information and stakeholders to address safety um safety orders at mandinering fuel depot and of course cbg hosts 44th assembly of governors Rainstorm destroys Kunta Kinte Island jetty. Election Watch urges IEC to publish all election results. Gina and orders arrive in Birmingham amid delay in visa transaction. That's what we have on the point. Okay, so where should we start from? So, Mr. Mboj, what's your take on the 30% pay rise for the civil service? You know, there's a lot of controversy surrounding that, as in, you know, talking about the fact that it's just going to favor individuals on top, you know, based on, because when you say 30% across the board, then it means obviously people with higher salaries will get to have more money from the 30% at stake. And then the person getting a $1,000 or 2000 5000 is getting less. So the argument is that um, the 30% should have been, you know, split in a way or targeting actually low earners, where if really it meant that they want to change the game, as to the salaries of the civil service. That's the argument. What's your take on it? Kind of a more graduated form. Uh -huh. um, imagine 30% of 3,000 is like 900. Exactly. 30% of 6,000 is 1,800. Right. <laughs> so that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yes, in fact, during the debate, some Excuse of the me. National Assembly members mm -hmm. um, suggested that perhaps those at the bottom, the lowest earners, will, should have 50% increment. Mm -hmm and the top ones 30 percent mm -hmm. then that would sort of make it balance as, mm -hmm. as a, a bit um yes in fact we know mm -hmm. i think that in fact government had initially promised about 100 percent and then it came down to 50 percent there have been various promises yeah. but then after a careful realistic appraisal mm -hmm. of really what government can do mm -hmm. given the, the, the circumstances mm -hmm. I think they realized that it was 30 percent and we understand that really the IMF I think was it the IMF or the World Bank had a strong say in determining this mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. figure yeah so but anyway apart from that we also see how they you know decide to come up with a um, the scheme you know we we did not catch up on that they we, they launched it but you can see that now the registration is ongoing where there's a health insurance scheme, you know, to try to actually target, you know, low-income earners and all of that. At least there's also, on the other hand, something to kind of complement expenses. Um, um, yes, but maybe let's focus a bit more on the increment itself. Mm -hmm. The national insurance scheme, <laughs> that's something else. There's so much to work on. But people <laughs> need to live now, today, tomorrow, next week, you know, they, they will need to have pay medical bills. The national insurance scheme will come, not, not, perhaps not, not quite 
yet. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but then here, let's, let's be realistic here. Yeah? We all know that revenue has declined. We're not getting grants. Things are really very difficult for the, for the country now. Mm -hmm. Even some people could say that perhaps this could have waited. Mm -hmm. This is an emergency. There's a Ukraine-Russia war. We don't even know when that would end. Inflation is rising, mm -hmm. cost of living. <laughs> we are in some trouble mm -hmm. and we have no idea where it's going to end, when mm -hmm. it's going to end. We have no idea. No, the really. COVID pandemic, yeah. we are still in it. We don't even know what other surprises might be in store for mm -hmm. us. So when you put all of these things together, there's really so much that government can do. Mm -hmm. Really, one, one has to be realistic. It just depends on how much you have, <laughs> how much money you have, what you can spend. Mm -hmm. So this is what, what, what could have been. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when you have this blanket as it were, increment, it may look superficially like it's favoring some rather than others. Mm -hmm. But in the end, mm -hmm. everybody receives a bit more. I, I want to focus on the positive sides. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. At the end, even the lowest, you receive a bit yeah, more, and I'm not sure whether fairness means sameness. It's different skills, different levels. This is what I expect. Then do when a you come to work, assessment. when you come to work, yeah. some people receive more than you do. That Same is here, true. and you also receive more than others. That's true. So, so there's a certain parity that okay. we then want. Let it's them unrealistic. Base it on that, then. It's yeah. unrealistic. No, no, no. Why, Mr. Bo, you know why I don't well, agree with what you're saying, Hamgaluta? Because, for example, being in the bottom. Being in the bottom does not mean that the skills are in there, that you're not doing what is expected. Does not really mean that you're not doing enough or the proper skills that should be there are not there. Nobody's saying that you've just moved on to another track. What we are saying is that mm. the fairness here is in 30% blanket mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. That superficially, on the face of it, it seems fair. Mm. One rule for everybody. No, one rule for everybody, but then it's well, not one rule point, for everybody. At because some point, no, no. Boy, when, when, one when, rule for when, everybody. When they, it is. Because the Faneka based on Kuneka wow. Langaneka the Am. Wow, no. No. Munga Neka si no, 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 no. you are wow. doing extremely well. I think. You do have 30% but I'm 900. Wow. No, no, no. What you mean to say is. Mm. Um, it's not it's not one rule for everybody, mm -hmm. but this one rule for everybody will have different outcomes. Mm -hmm. So let's tidy up the thinking one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Certainly it will have different outcomes. Mm -hmm. All I can guarantee you is equality of opportunity. Nobody can guarantee outcomes. We pay different skills differently, different levels differently. So these differentials will about to emerge. Let's stop being sentimental about these things. Sentimental. This is how you run governments and institutions. True, but that is why you have everywhere, you have your skill. Then the poor will With continue to be poor and then... Well, it doesn't it. mean that. Some people, perhaps because of their poverty, I've heard a few people who became rich, and one of them I said in an interview, I was just tired of be being poor, so I just put my socks up and decided to work. Why government? So, so life is like this. Up poor life is like this. Up well, don't you think, putty. you know, Mr. Boyd, don't Come you think... Government setting, wow. hang a private sector, wow. so then they will not them wow. finance. Why, why, why government you sometimes you are stuck? So set increment be 30% uh, per civil service. So go set it. Don't you think there should be a way of increasing this so that um, the guy gives at least margin buneka digante you know, have the new bottom be at top be at least, you know, the far fair. But I mean, when when you talk about thirty percent, come knock over here. So on a thirty percent, still, there is no difference. You see, this is it. You know, my it's a notions of fairness which I do not quite accept. Um, what, what is fair? How do you measure that? We are really entering into some difficult stuff. But the way you see it, you think it is it is a simple stuff. Um. In situations like this, some would benefit more than others. The idea that you want to have that parity of benefits, all of them, I'm not sure where that sort of life exists. Come I think it's more of everywhere. an idealized, I think it's more of an idealized quality, how things are done, much more than rooted in reality. Yeah, but the thing is, obviously, <laughs> even if those people have 50% increment, they will never catch up with the people on top. But we're just saying that let them have something where they can have a stable livelihood. 
with current dynamics of how prices are going up. You you assuming that they're not having stable livelihoods. That is I'm not careful. assuming these like, are people that we talk no, no, to. No, no, let's My be careful. Teachers, for example, <laughs> just last week I was having a conversation with a teacher. Mm. Mm. Come. I'm a stable livelihood. Aksuma do me. Aknuma work come. Munta am decent life. Munta am decent life. Bala where be the day of our am put them left fenen. Mu compliment where be the day and mugini. Say that mu continue life. So say that I'm Jenaba. Nanga gives me price and get yoku. Luneka muge yoku. You know, prices are skyrocketing. Um, the guy is sometimes yen an increment, sir. Do you know? Never reflect current reality. So say that I'm tax boy. I mean, at the same time, Lulu. Because Suneke and a yoka and salary, right? Then your yoka is a tax fee. At some point, the guy is no salaries will be up to tax law. So it is very serious. System B is not fair. Is there any system that's fair? We no are going system down. is fair. We are Why not Okay, round. what do we say? It should not be like In fair circles. 100%, but let it at least be a little balance. Just a, we just ask you for a little balance. You know? Yes, let's keep asking. You might get it sooner yeah, or later. Yeah, yeah, you never know. You <laughs> never know. But anyway, here, are flood victims hold physical planning department accountable for their predicaments. You know, they're saying the physical planning is not doing their job when it comes to identifying um, habitable areas. But then on the other hand, you can see how authorities are also saying that individuals are strong-headed at some point when it comes to settling in places. They know clearly well that these are waterways and then they get to settle there by force. And then, mm. you know, it's just confusing. That's it. Without really um, considering the risks they are taking. Involved. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The risks to their lives, property, in case there, there's a flooding. Yes, here I have to say it's, it's just failure all round. Failure, of course, from the Department of Physical Planning. But again, failure on the side of the people who would go and build their houses where it's a high risk. there's a high risk for, for flooding and all sorts of disasters. So uh, I'm not sure whether it's enough. There must be an understanding of really how much, really, as a citizen, I must also show responsibility in, in what I do. Mm -hmm. And we also appeal to these institutions to, you know, to make it easier, enforce what you need to enforce. Where, where does one begin? This, this place is just so, so, so <laughs> difficult. You've just got blame all around. Everyone's blaming and, and, each other. Even institutions, even when it comes to this issue, you can see how maybe the NDMA even feels that they have a stake in certain things with the work that they do to, to assess and determine, you know, identify hazards and risks. Mm -hmm. They're not even involved, you know. So it should start from them coming together as institutions and work together even before coming to us as citizens to ask us what to do or to stop well, us. I because you're saying issues. You know something, you know something? I have to tell you this. When you look around, there are so many institutions. Have you realized yeah. the NDMA, Kini, Ministry of this, Water Department resources. of that? You've got all sorts. Mm -hmm. Is there any coordinating mechanism? I really, do not know. I really do not Confirm know. Confirm that I'm I, I do hear, I do hear people who think about these mm -hmm. things talk about streamlined government. Mm -hmm. But it appears as if we are bloated with all sorts of institutions, True. and I have no idea what they are doing. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of institutions. Then it's an organizational yeah. nightmare. Mm. Really? How do you coordinate? How do you streamline stuff so that you can implement, really well, monitor, get your outcomes? Um, the saddest I don't know. thing is I don't know. we have so many institutions mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for this, responsible for that. But at the end of the time, you look at the output is very small. Mm -hmm. I mean, still, um, the same problem repeats itself yearly. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is very serious. I mean, when you look at the issue of um, the flooding in the country, mm -hmm. I think um, um, it's the responsibility of every individual. Like, I mean, people that settle on waterways. Um, I think people are not taking up their responsibilities. And at the same time, institutions as well, people like... Um, I think NDMA is pointing fingers um, mm -hmm. at physical planning. Physical planning is pointing fingers at the people yeah. settling on waterways. So the system is so confusing. Yeah, but from the system being confused, I just hope um, 
you know, the situation changes. Uh, Mr. Mboja, I think we Ch have to let you go. Changes how? Pass the buck? <laughs> this game of pass the buck? Ah, no how wa. would it change? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fat repeating the same thing all the time. That's what we do. And then we can't point, we can't see actions or changes happening. Well, anyway, let's keep on talking. That's what we can do. Push them, hold them accountable. Mr. Mbo, thank you so much. There's always something to learn from you. Thank yes, you so I mean. much for joining us. Yes. All right, so we'll go for a short break. And when we come back, the show continues to stay tuned. Save up to 50% energy with the new side-by-side -side Samsung refrigerator. Samsung air conditioners come with HD filter and antibacteria for your protection. Save time, energy, and effort by using our washing machines loaded with innovative features that offer superior cleaning technology. Step into the future of television with our slick and slim Samsung Smart TV designs. Sizes range from 32 to 85 inches. Smart LED, Crystal UHD Ultra High Definition, and QLED Quantum Dark LED. Get new ways of interacting with your TV. Unparalleled vision, right from the comfort of your living room. Our products are backed with one year warranty. Visit us at QCell Building at Caraba Avenue or at Boost Returning. Contact us on 333-3217 or email us at info at quantumnet.gm. Have you been looking for the perfect indoor router with long range Wi Fi coverage? faster internet speed connecting all your smart devices? Well, we present to you the QCell Indoor Router, a router that has all you need and much more. For just $4,275, you can get 4G plus internet speed, wide coverage, and connect up to 15 devices. And that's not all. The Indoor Router can be used for both office and home needs. So, enhance your internet experience with our Indoor Router. For more info, call our customer care on 111. QCell, Senior Bus, we innovate, others follow. All right, so welcome back from that break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV this morning. So, yeah, let's take a look at um, what um, a group of young people are doing within 20 days to um, help prevent. Um, road traffic accidents, and we are joined by one of their representatives here, Malang Fati. Malang, thank you so much for joining us. Um, obvious question, you know, why do you need to mobilize yourselves as young people to 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 get to ensure that you you help prevent road traffic accidents? And also, what's your what's your relationship with the police? Who is supporting this particular operation? Because we need to also make sure you're okay, because we know how bad our traffic can be, and the people as to even not accepting to listen to you people because the authority is not there. So please take us through that. Well, thank you so much, uh, Genova, yeah. for those wonderful questions. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty um, glad to be invited here. Okay. Um, well, basically, um, as she rightly said, my name is Malam Fati. I'm the co-founder of the various organizations um, that is embarking on this journey, mm -hmm. which is United Children and Youth Development Organization, the Gambia. Right. Um, founded on the 1st of December, 2015. Um, right now, we embark on this sensitization mm -hmm. as the issue of road accident mm -hmm. um, is actually escalating, mm. uh, in which we have seen it deem important. Uh, what's the name action. of the institution like your organization? United Children and Youth Development Organization, the Gambia. Okay, United mm -hmm. Children and Youth Development Organization, the, the Gambia. Gambia. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, you can go. Yes, so actually um, it hasn't been part of our aims and objective. Mm -hmm. Normally what we do is to sensitize young people on issues affecting their lives uh, such as drug abuse, teenage pregnancies, and so on. But we also um, participate in community cleansing exercises. Right. Okay? So it has come to be a great concern for mm -hmm. us as mm -hmm. patriotic citizens. Mm -hmm. um, despite the number of lives that have been lost in the past um, road accidents, mm. I say to myself that we shouldn't have to be mm -hmm. selfish. Mm -hmm. you know, as 
human being. Right. It could be in a way that when an individu individual died or you know, is being jailed in a country, the whole young people will took to the street, protest and do you know, a lot of things. But could you imagine if an accident happened, how many you know, souls usually been lost? Mm. Mm. Normally, it will not be one or two. We have seen the past three um, months mm -hmm. the fatal accidents that had occurred, which claimed about 30 people's mm. lives. And there are many at the hospital struggling for their health. Right. So that has inspired us to, to come to up with action, mm -hmm. which is 20 days of activism, so as to you know, talk to the drivers. Mm -hmm every road users, our authorities, as to how we will come together, lay mechanisms in order to avert such effect. Mm. Okay, Mala, uh, mm. what do you think mm -hmm. is the main problem that caused road accident in the Gambia? Well, it all boils down to our behaviors. We have laws that govern traffic in the Gambia. We have realized that many drivers in the Gambia do not care about the life saving or what they care about the m amount of money that I'm going to earn in a day. So to me, the main cause of road accident in Gambia is reckless driving. Mm -hmm. You know, over speeding, overtaking, all those are factors which contribute to road accident. Mm. And then you realize that many citizens don't respect their laws in this country. You go to acquire a license. You know the methodologies that you're supposed to go through. But you will try to obtain it in a fraud way. Mm. You know, I'm knowing fully well that you are not eligible to have a license. Or even our parents, most of the time, will send their kids to the shop or other places mm. when you realize that your son is not qualified to drive. So all those are factors. Yeah. So my, my point here, that obviously the experts are there to kind of talk about these issues and engage the police and all the mm -hmm. departments about this. But my concern is, what is your relationship with the police? Because obviously you do not have the authority to control traffic. Sure. So how are you going to achieve what you're telling me? You are embarking on an exercise, an activism <coughs> to help prevent road traffic accidents. Is it physically on the traffic mm -hmm. or just, you know, coming to platforms like this? That's what I want to understand. A wonderful question. Um, this 20 days of activism is targeting both drivers, every road users, even those who you know, use footpaths anyway. We are trying to make them also So are you aware. going around with flyers as and exactly. everything to talk to people, but not as in controlling things? Exactly. We also engage the police force okay you know try to know what are their challenges you know how can we join them in order to solve those challenges okay just last week anyway i was even at the you know, traffic um headquarters okay trying to engage them the challenges but i've realized that you know we have laws that are in place mm -hmm. but those laws need to be revised mm. Okay, and I've been told that it was been passed to the National Assembly for okay. the past two years. Mm. But it's just mm -hmm. all of a recent that they are trying to um, look after it. You know, which definitely um, hurts me because accident we have seen how it is been escalating. Okay. You know, according to WHO example mm. um, um, statistic for the um, 2018 road accident in the Gambia is about 4.74 okay. percent, okay? The rate, so coming down to this year, it has reached over 5 percent. Mm. And globally, Gambia is marked fourth. Right. You know. 
So Marlon, anyway, we, 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 we wish you um, a successful 20 days of activism. Thank I you. know it might be difficult because pedestrians sometimes might not, you know, listen. Sometimes drivers might, you know, question authority yes, and all I'm of sure. that. And but I think it's important also, mm -hmm. I mean, for you to um, sensitize the people mm -hmm. the importance of road signs. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the likes of the zebra crossing. Mm. You know, most people don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, drivers don't know, people don't know. You know, sometimes I'll be in the middle of the road where you have the zebra mm. crossing and still a driver will be driving mm. towards me. Mm. You understand? We have all those problems. Mm. Is there any point you engage the National Road Authority? Because <coughs> they are also very important in this. Thank you so much, Mr. Balde. Mm. Uh, the first step that we took mm. was to reach out to them. I sat um <coughs> physically with the minister mm -hmm. um gave him our um our, our concern about the road accident in the gambia initially we wanted to make it nationwide but as a voluntary organization we do all our activities based on volunteerism okay we do not um go in for huge amount of money bring it see how best we're able to um <coughs> help ourselves and give quarter, you know, um, to the public to implement a particular program. I can tell you this, since right we started the organization, we haven't get an amount of money which will be um, more than 30,000. Mostly, we only seek for um, support. Mm -hmm. When we organize in the school debate championship or talent show, so as to give um, trophies. Mm -hmm. But normally what we do is to go around to schools during the assembly period, you know, we give out information mm -hmm. to the young people that are beneficial to them. So um, starting this, when I engage the minister, he have to um, refer me to um, some of his staffs, which I engage. I engage National Road Authority too as well. Mm. Okay, and uh, all of a sudden, um, they have called for um, a working group committee. Mm. Okay which comprises of representatives from different sectors. And then um, <coughs> just today, we will be, um, the minister will hand over some signboard mm -hmm. to the working groups. Okay, oh, that right. will be, you know, posted on All the right. roads. So I mm -hmm. think due to time constraints, Malang, <coughs> we have to let you go. But mm -hmm. um, good luck, you know, might be difficult it's because we all know how difficult it is sometimes to change people's mindsets and Definitely. behaviors. Mm -hmm. But good luck. Um, Hopefully. So, uh, yes, finally, when yeah. is this 20 days, I mean, sensitization starting? Actually, um, it is starting on the 8th. 8th of this month? 8th of this month. Okay. We had already done the first, okay, the, tw the first 20 days has elapsed. Mm -hmm. But we believe in impact. Mm. And then we face a lot of constraint at the beginning, okay? That makes us to start lately. So I've told my team that we definitely have to um, extend it in order to ensure that we see impact mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it will commence um, on the 5th, but we will do the opening, um, the official opening ceremony on the 8th of, this, eighth month. of this month. Right. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Brahma, I think that is all we have time for. Yes. All right. So we, we apologize. I did introduce earlier that mm -hmm. on social issues, we'll be joined by NDMA um, to talk about um, the current um, issues that are happening in relation to flooding. But unfortunately, they are unable to be here. We, we deeply apologize. Um, hopefully, tomorrow we'll be able to, you know, get them on this program. So till we come your way tomorrow with another interesting program, bye-bye.